Welcome to Reformers Bookshop's Enjoying Jesus Book Club, where we consider chapters from Enjoying Jesus by Tim Chester. G'day and welcome back to another episode of the Reformers Book Club, looking at Enjoying Jesus by Tim Chester. And we're up to chapter 7, Enjoying the Delight of Jesus. And these chapters, for me, just keep getting better and better. And this one makes my heart sing. It really does. Uh, I love the fact that Jesus delights in his people. I love the fact that Jesus delights in me. And it's really quite astonishing. Because any Christian understands that, that they are a sinner, that they haven't done anything worthy of admiration, worthy of love towards God, and yet God is so delighted in his people. Jesus is so delighted in his people. I love that, that verse in Zechariah uh, that says, he will sing over you. He will, he will joy over you with singing. Um, but Tim, Tim goes in this chapter to the Song of Songs and quotes a section which pictures the beloved, which is Christ in uh, in the allegorical reading of Song of Songs, uh, and Christ is bounding towards his people, racing towards them. That's, that's what it was like when Jesus became a man. Um, he pursued his bride. He pursued his beloved. It wasn't reluctant at all. Um, it was a man who loves his wife, running after her to, to bring her back. Um, and that's just beautiful. It really is to, just beautiful to sit and think about how much Jesus wants to be with his people, how much he wants to be with you even now. Uh, in that Song of Songs quotation, uh, Tim points out two lines. One is, I want to see your face, and the other is, I want to hear your voice. And again, Tim employs this idea of, uh, let's call it a sanctified imagination, to say next time you sit down to read the scriptures or to hear preaching or to sing a hymn or to take the Lord's Supper, whatever it might be, um, imagine how much how eager Jesus is to spend time with you um, and to, to see you delight in his love just as he delights in you. This is such a marvelous thought. And it's something I wish was more real to me. Every time, when I say that, I mean it's so easy to forget. It's so easy to forget uh, as we go about our day-to-day -day lives that Jesus is there uh, rejoicing in you, his bride. It's so easy to forget that even about others. You know, we go to church and one of the, one of the things we discover it, not even in in church so much, but think about your family, um, where, if there are any Christians in your family, or uh, like I said, think about your church. One of the things we discover when we get close to other sinners is that we really feel their sin. People will do things that uh, we have told them about before, and yet they keep sinning in the same way, and we think, how could they do this? Um, and we get frustrated and bitter and annoyed. But think about the fact that Jesus delights in your brother or your sister in the Lord. That changes the way you might deal with uh, other Christians at your church or your spouse or your family or your children if they are professing believers, right? Because Jesus delights in them. Jesus delights in them. So you should too. That's the implication. I mean, another implication of this would be that uh, God teaches us, God the Father has the same delight for us as God the Son does. And we are to learn how to be parents from God the Father. And so if he delights in his children, we should delight in ours. Um, so this idea of being 
irritated and frustrated all the time and angry at our children just doesn't connect with this truth that Father, Son and Holy Spirit delight in the children of God. There's so much to think about and so much to rejoice in in this chapter. Enjoying the delight of Jesus.